The Lord be with you. <clears throat> the Lord lives in his holy temple, yet abides in our midst. Since in baptism Giselle became God's temple, and the Spirit of God lived in her, with reverence we bless her mortal body.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Je veux commencer pour um, accueillir tout le monde qui, qui, qui nous assiste uh, de la France, and also from Australia, et aussi d'Australie, um, for this, this terribly sad day. Un jour très tristesse, un jour plein de tristesse, um, when, we, when we spring the body of Giselle amongst us, and we pray for her. And so this day becomes a day of prayer, not just a day of sadness, but a day of hope and prayer. Dear friends in Christ, in the name of Jesus and of his church, we've gathered here to pray for Giselle, that God may bring her to everlasting peace and rest. We share the pain of loss, but the promise of eternal life gives us hope. So let us comfort one another as we turn to prayer. And we say together the words which we have here in our, in our orders of service, the I confess. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Giselle, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Seigneur, toi seul peux nous rendre la confiance quand il nous semble que la mort est victorieuse. Augmente aujourd'hui notre foi en ton Fils Jésus ressuscité de mort. Affermis notre espérance de la résurrection de Gisèle, ta serviteuse et notre sœur. Par notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, ton Fils, qui vivra et règne dans l'unité de l'Esprit Saint pour tous les siècles des siècles. Amen. Premier épître de Saint Paul, apôtre Corinthien. Voici, je vais vous révéler un mystère. Nous ne passerons pas tous par le mort, mais nous serons tous transformés en un instant, en un clin d'œil, au son de la trompette dernière. Car lorsque cette trompette rentira, le mort ressuscitera pour être désormais incorruptible, tandis que nous, nous serons changés. En effet, ce corps corruptible doit se revêtir d'incorruptibilité de ce corps mortel, doit se revêtir d'immortalité. Lorsque ce corps corruptible aura revêtu l'incorruptibilité, que, et que ce corps mortel aura revêtu de la mortalité, alors se trouvera ré réalisée cette parole de l'Écriture, la victoire totale sur le mort et être remportée. Ô mort, qu'est devenue ta victoire Ô mort, où est ton dard Le dard de, de la mort, c'est le péché, et le péché tire sa force de la loi. Mais lui, Loué soit Dieu qui nous donne la victoire par notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. La parole de Dieu. The response to the psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of death, no, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for ever and ever. Amen. If you'd like to stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he's calling Elijah. And one ran and filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait and see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that he had thus breathed his last. He said, truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Um, je vais le ver, um, lire en français aussi. À midi, le pays tout entier fut plongé dans l'obscurité, et cela dura jusqu'à trois heures de l'après-midi. Vers trois heures, Jésus cria d'une voix forte, « Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani » qui signifie « Mon Dieu, mon Dieu, pourquoi m'as-tu abandonné ?» En entendant ces paroles, quelques-uns de ceux qui étaient là disaient « Voilà qu'il qu appelle Elie. » Un homme courut imbibé une éponge de vinaigre, la piqua au bout d'un roseau et la présenta à Jésus pour qu'il boive en disant « Laissez-moi faire. » On va bien voir si Elie vous vient de le tirer de là. Mais Jésus poussa un grand cri et expira. Alors le rideau du temple se déchira en deux, de haut en bas, voyant de quelle manière qu'il était mort. L'officier romain qui se tenait en face de Jésus dit « Cet homme était vraiment le fils de Dieu ». Acclamons le parole de Dieu, louange à toi, Seigneur Jésus. If you'd like to be seated. I'm going to come up here so that maybe more of you can see me. <laughs> And um, because it's difficult with them um, um, in, this, in this little space. But I, we need to listen to these readings and let them speak to us about what we're doing here. When Jesus cried, Aloy, Aloy, Lama Sabachthani, my God, why, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the cry which those that mourn Giselle, especially Frederick and, and Rémy, who have only lost their father recently, understand a sense of abandonment, a sense of darkness. And the vestments which I wear here today are black, representing the darkness that those that feel abandoned when they've lost somebody that they love feel and experience in their lives. But in the same moment, we need to remember that as Jesus died, the curtain in the temple, le rideau du temple, was torn from top to bottom. And what does that signify? It signifies that as Jesus entered into darkness, into the darkness of death, as God entered into the Lord of life. God, the Lord of life, entered into the darkness of death. So he changed what it was to be a man. So our experience of humanity was changed because God himself, the Lord of life, had entered into death. And so there was nothing that can separate us from the love of God. From that moment onwards, nothing can separate us from God's love. He sweeps into the congregation, so to speak, from the Holy of Holies in the temple. He comes through into all of those that are down in the bottom of the temple, into those that are lost and feel abandoned and share that sense of abandonment, so that we can say, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh mort, que c'est devenu ta victoire? O oh mort, où est ton dar? Where is your sting, death? Because we fall asleep. We go beyond the veil and we see the Lord as he loves each one of us. We pass beyond the veil. Giselle has passed beyond the rideau, the veil, and can see how much God loves us. And in the twinkling of her eye, as we heard Paul talk about in his letter to the Corinthians, in the twinkling of, an, of her eye, on un clin d'œil, au son de la trompette dernière, the sound of the trumpet sounds. In the twinkling of an eye, we will be with her. In the twinkling of her eye, she will be surrounded by those who love her, her family, her family and her friends. You are here, whether you're here in person or whether you're here from all over the world, you are here to join us in prayer, the greatest of prayers, the prayer of the Eucharist, the prayer of the Mass, when we lift up the body of Christ on the altar and we offer the body of Christ, the Son of God, to God the Father with our prayers for Giselle and with our prayers for Frederick and Rémy and their family.
and for all of you. That you feel consolation in the faith that death has no sting any longer and that there is gold that shines through the black just as it does in this vestment that I'm wearing. That there is gold, the golden light shines through the death, the darkness of death in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And now what we have are some bidding prayers. So if you'd like to come up, the readers would like to come up for the bidding prayers um, for the, uh, yeah. Dearly beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died and rose from the dead in order to open for us the pathway to eternal life. As we gather in sorrow to mourn the passing of Giselle, let us offer up our prayers, confident that Almighty God hears the voices of those who trust in his beloved Son. Pour son baptême, Giselle a reçu la gage de, de la vie éternelle et la lumière de la foi. Dispersez les ténèbres et aidez-la à franchir les eaux de la mort jusqu'au lieu que Dieu a préparé pour elle. Seigneur, dans ta miséricorde, entends notre prière. Entends votre prière. Lord, hear our prayer. Seigneur, nous prions pour les enfants, les petits-enfants, la famille élargie, les amis et tous ceux à qui la présence de Gisèle manque. Qu'ils soient rassurés par toi et par la connaissance que son âme est maintenant avec Dieu. Seigneur, dans ta miséricorde, entends notre prière. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all that Giselle brought to the lives of so many. Her passion, tenacity, wisdom, loyalty, and her sense of humor are already missed by those who were fortunate enough to have met her. May we be reunited with all our loved ones after this, our earthly life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for the life that Giselle led, for the sacrifice that she made for her family, for the love that she showed her friends and her family, and for the comfort, support, and cap compassion that she provided to so many over the course of her life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us turn in our sorrow to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Savior, and ask her to join in our prayers. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister Giselle. Cleanse her and all the faithful departed of their sins, and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we have the offertory.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice to us. Praise and glory of his name for our good and his holy church. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Giselle, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Le Seigneur soit avec vous et avec votre esprit. Élevons notre cœur, nous le tournons vers le Seigneur. Rendons grâce au Seigneur notre Jésus, cela est juste et bon. Vraiment, il est juste et bon de, ta, de te rendre gloire, de, de t'offrir notre action de grâce, toujours et en tout lieu, à toi, Père très saint, Dieu éternel et tout puissant, par le Christ notre Seigneur. C'est en lui qui qu'a resplendi pour nous l'espérance de la résurrection bienheureuse. Et si la loi de la mort nous afflige, la promesse de, de l'immortalité nous apporte la consolation. Car pour tous ceux qui croient en toi, Seigneur, la vie n'est pas détruite, elle est transformée. De lorsque prendre fin leur séjour de la terre, ils ont déjà une demeure éternelle dans, le, dans les cieux. C'est pourquoi, avec les anges et les archanges, avec les puissances d'en haut et en tous les, les esprits bienheureux, nous chantons l'hymne de, de ta gloire et sans fin nous proclamons. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your seven Francis, our Pope and Vincent, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Giselle, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. So at the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon them. With your saints for ever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. With your saints for ever, for you are merciful. Those that would like to receive communion, if they could come up now.
Let us pray. Lord God, we have celebrated the sacrament of your son's death and resurrection for the benefit of your servant Giselle. Grant that she may come to the banquet of life in Christ that Christ has prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I think there's going to be some words. By most accounts, my mother was a difficult woman. She, armed with the courage of her own convictions, she does not and did not back down all the way through her life and until the end in the face of death. She was direct to the point of sometimes being blunt, unafraid of confrontation. She would sometimes seek out conflict if she felt she was being disrespected, lied to, or someone was simply being out of line. There was never any doubt about where you stood with my mother. She always made that very clear. One of the things that was most disarming, disarming and destabilizing about her is that she had this amazing ability to have a perfectly pleasant, relaxing conversation and in the blink of an eye, if she felt you were rude or disingenuous, she would make a pointed and cutting remark, leaving you wondering where on earth that came from. But she was also deeply loving. She was attentive and she was caring to the point of self-sacrifice. She remained and made an effort of remaining close to all of the family, regardless of whether they were her own brothers and sisters or those of our father. She always spoke highly of everyone, and she was always very attentive to the enlarged family. Also with her friends, she was loyal and stayed close to her friends throughout her life, speaking about them with a great level of fondness right until the end. Frankness, dignity, education, and good manners were essential values. They were core values that, in her eyes, defined an individual. It's how she lived her life, and it's how she wanted Frederick and I to live ours. She was born in Egypt to an illustrious Lebanese Maronite family who spawned two presidents several ministers, but also created a, a Christian militia group that went to war with Hezbollah for many years. My mother was a befitting member of the Jamail family in every sense. Raised in a very strict and pious environment, she had to face adversity quite early. She had rheumatic fever at a young age and was unable to attend school for months at a time. Despite her frailty and her poor health, she managed to overcome that adversity and excelled academically, both at school, where she finished first, and at university. Continuing her university role, she was offered a movie, a movie position, movie role in, in, in Egyptian cinema, which she was told to refuse. She went on and completed her degree at university, finishing first in her year. Discipline, hard work, and determination were values that she learned through adversity and the same values that she wanted to impart on us. After university, she became a news presenter on Egyptian radio, worked for the Secret Service, monitoring French communications uh, in Egypt, and when my parents immigrated to France in 1971 through hardship and financial difficulty, she was the first to work. And hard work was a central theme in, in all of her life. She later worked with the French Foreign Office 
and managed to secure French nationality for all of our family. Family and work were central themes to her life. And although she worked hard almost all of her life, she worked even harder at home. Her ability to look after the house, to look after the family, to keep a close eye on Frederick and I was exemplary. Her attention to detail and discipline almost got to the point where they were suffocating for Frederick and I, but I think we would probably both agree that we're the both better at for it now. Like in every our household, I think th there were times when there were arguments at home. Um, there were arguments between us. There were silly arguments about who's closer to whom, none of which have any importance uh, now. We deeply love her, and we're going to deeply miss her. One of my earliest memories of my mother is when um, I was at preschool, and she had dropped me off at preschool and was steadfastly walking to the, to the metro, um, heading off to work, getting on with life and, what, and the task ahead of her without ever shirking her responsibility or her sense of duty. One of my last memories of her, and perhaps one of my favorite, is three weeks ago. She was on her hospital bed. Um, she was exhausted. She couldn't feed herself. The nurses kept moving her. They kept injecting her. She was in agony every time someone was trying to move her. Frederick and I were there kind of feeling powerless wondering what we could do to make her feel somehow more comfortable. So she was going to speak, and I leant over, um, thinking she's going to ask me for something that's going to make her more comfortable. <laughs> and under her breath, she said, if they move me once more, I'm going to shoot them. Thank you. I'm also going to start with the hospital story, a different one, thankfully. We didn't compare notes before, so I'm glad we selected a different one. But when she was in hospital recently, Rami and I uh, received this text from her oncologist. He said, I saw your mum last night. The Lebanese chef came in, and I watched her completely overwhelm him with charm. She also had all the nurses and some of the doctors in her room asking her for advice about their various issues in their personal lives. What a character. When I asked my mother about this, she recounted in considerable detail the various personal issues she talked to nurses and doctors about, remembering virtually every detail from every conversation. As for Pierre, a wonderful, kind and compassionate Lebanese chef at the hospital, such was the rapport and the genuine care he showed for her that subject to what her appetite would allow. He prepared all of my mum's meals and teas over her final months and weeks to include her favourite dishes such as mashi, kibbe, mulocheya and vine leaves and even some traditional dessert. Pierre, if you're watching this, thank you. This story in just the last few weeks exemplified several important facets of who my mother was. For the vast majority of the time, she was incredibly compassionate, an amazing listener, a shoulder to lean on and a fighter on many levels, a person who made maintained and cherished strong relationships and friendships. Whenever I was with her over the last few years, I would marvel at the sheer volume of texts and WhatsApp notifications on multiple cross-continental phones that she managed to contend with on a daily basis and the speed with which she would normally respond and respond at length. She left me realizing that I was, in fact, decidedly unpopular compared to her. When my mum passed, several nurses broke down when talking to me, saying that they would miss her and that I should be proud that such an amazing woman was my mother. 
that she was that way and was able to make friends in so many different types of environments, cultures and languages was a byproduct of her nature, her family, her background. I'm going to overlap a little bit with Rami now, um, but I think it's some details are worth sharing. My mother had Lebanese Maronite bloodlines on both her father and mother's side, albeit my mum was born in Egypt and was decidedly Egyptian. She had an extremely close relationship with her two brothers and her sister, but contracted rheumatic fever and a good couple of years of her schooling life were knocked out with her being bedbound. Like Rami said, resilience was innate and that's where it came from, at least that's where it began. And when she came back to school, not only did she, did she keep up, but she ended up coming first out of 100,000 students in her end of high school exams. Enter my father after university, and by all accounts, he was a particularly persuasive man in his 20s. And he and my mother wed in 1967. Along came Rami a little over a year later. It's safe to say that in an academic and professional context, whatever role or studies my mother pursued, she excelled because that was the type of person she was. Whatever she did, she was all in. She gave everything, and she did it with her heart and her soul. She did it whether it was politically correct or not. That's just how she was. And being a wife to my father and a mum to Rami and I was certainly no exception to that. In fact, of all the things my mother excelled at, being a mother was what she prioritized above everything. She sacrificed what she might have personally wanted for herself to care for and raise Rami and I. If our father was the dreamer telling us to have limitless ambition, to believe in ourselves, my mother was there to keep us and my father grounded, at least she tried, and to make sure that every day we did everything that was needed to give us the skills and the attribute, attributes that she thought life would demand. It was study, it was sport, it was music, it was manners, it was duty to family, duty to friends, duty to work. She pushed me on a daily basis. Go study, go study, she would say, with unlimited patience. I made it hard. Nintendo and PlayStation and any form of sport with a ball were all infinitely more appealing than a book or maths exercises, but she persevered relentlessly. She taught me the value of dedication and commitment and rigor. Things had to be perfect, she would tell me, or you would... Go, need to go and start again. When I was at university, with the exception of the last couple of years, every semester went the same way. I did very little in the first 90% of the term and learnt or tried to learn everything towards the end. Why do you do this every semester? Why didn't you start earlier? Why indeed? As with many things, she was right, but my all-knowing teenage wisdom wouldn't be told. Despite that, she would wake up in the middle of the night to bring me food and supplies to make sure I was okay and could keep going. Speaking of food, we were fed in the Egyptian mold. The volume of food consumed on a daily basis was enough to feed a pride of lions, and in true Egyptian style, the first four times I said I was full were completely ignored. Even today, my ability to consume food is legendary, born of a lifetime of Olympic, of Olympic calorie consumption. I will be eternally grateful for everything that my mother did for me. It's not in my nature to have a long list of regrets, but I do wish I'd listened more. She was right more often than I told her. It was silly of me to argue, sometimes for the sake of it. I wish we all had just a few more years together. She deserved to enjoy and treat herself after all that she did selflessly through her life, not just for us, but for my dad, who she cared for throughout, but especially in his final five years where he was ill and incapacitated. Fortunately, it wasn't to be, at least not here. It goes without saying, but I'm going to miss her terribly. I'll miss the way she used to say my name, unless she was angry with me. I'll miss her messages, even the really, really long ones. I'll miss her cooking, and I'll miss our calls while I drive. Four days ago, I'd forgotten what had happened for a split second and reached for my phone. But I am comforted now in the knowledge that she's rejoined my father they're in the presence of God, and most importantly, they're together again where, let's all be honest, they were both happiest. Even if they didn't always admit it. I'm comforted in that there's no more pain, no more discomfort, no more injections, no more tests, no more tablets. And lastly, I take most comfort in the knowledge that she lived her life, just like Rami said, the way she wanted. Despite everything, I'm not convinced she would have done anything differently if she had a chance again. It remains for me to thank all of you here and those who knew and were close to my mother and all around the world 
for the sheer volume of wonderful and touching messages we've received. For those messages and stories, we thank you. I enjoyed reading them, even if it sometimes made the sting that little bit sharper sometimes. The messages were comforting in that so many people, friends and family, saw my mother for the amazing person she was. It meant more than you know. Take care of yourselves and stay in touch. My mother would certainly insist on it. Our sister Giselle has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend her to the loving memory of our Father and let our prayers go with her. She was adopted as God's daughter in baptism and was nourished at the altar of the Lord. May Christ the Good Shepherd carry her home to be at peace with the Father. May she rejoice forever in the presence of the Eternal King and in the company of all the saints. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Giselle, in the sure and certain hope that together with all those who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Giselle forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so in peace, let us take Giselle to her place of rest. <laughs> 